Oh, that's my jam. Bust it. Why they get a hold of this man? Smoking up. Some crack on the streets. Every time I get my chances. I smoked a biscuit, now I can't feel my feet. I'm just a man with the will to get high. So many times, I smoked it too fast. I'm out. I trade my booty for money. I can do that. Hey, just a tip, and you better have my crack. I can't fight my urge to get high. I got out of the crack it in the middle of the night. Driving up through the ghetto to find a dealer. I need a good crack supplier. Can you give me a light? <laughs> what's up what's up what's up what's up everybody and welcome back to episode two of the fast franco podcast i am your host with the most the blessed and highly favorite franco to pin here with the fastest growing podcast in flint michigan dare i say the number one podcast in flint michigan uh, how is everybody doing on this Friday evening? I am fresh off of work. Like I said, I am here uh, shooting this uh, episode of the podcast. Uh, this usually would be an episode of Bitchin' by the Bar, but um, it's late. And. Marky D is somewhere I'm sure getting drunk With several Latina women And I want to uh, hinder His goals right now so Here I am I was just like whoop I'm by myself So you know what that means Episode of the Fast Franco Podcast So Here we is Uh Yo this is Okay <laughs> Feels good to be with you guys here For the next for anybody who knows, when I whenever I do, there's a reason it's called the Fast Rick Podcast. Uh not gonna be here. Only here for a half hour. Uh talking about topics that matter to me. Or d- don't matter, but I found it interesting. Uh I mean I had some shit ready to go and now I can't find it. <laughs> Ain't that a bitch? Why would uh, sorry I got a at a video call right in the middle of fucking Hold on, wait a minute. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh so got a couple things I want y'all to listen to and then we uh I'm going to discuss them. Uh but yeah. Uh what well, once again, welcome back to episode number two of the Fast Franco Podcast, my solo joint. Uh, yeah, we're gonna get into this first story, which is wild that I wanted to share on here. Uh, let's, let's cue it up real quick. After <laughs> I hate that Facebook fucking play commercials. That's fucking stupid. Entitled ex-girlfriend wants the engagement ring I gave her because she broke up with me before I could propose. Gets arrested for her troubles. A while back, I was dating this girl for roughly two years. I thought things were going great, but apparently she was just dating me because she liked to tell people that she was in a relationship. No, that's how it went with her. The way she described me was too immature, decent in bed, and honestly not worth the rest of my life. Exact words she said to a friend after we broke up. I went out and I bought a ring. Had this entire thing planned out to propose to her. However, she was suddenly not available for several weeks in a row. Well, my fears rang true as she suddenly showed up at my place one day. She acted like everything was normal as we talked, and she was grabbing everything that was hers. About halfway through, I just kind of looked at her and said... 
don't forget your hair dryer. It would be awkward to have to come back over after you dump me. This sparked a long and awkward conversation where she was fake crying. I again realized right then and there that I was an idiot. The way she acted, the way she spoke, and the way she treated me just screamed that she did not care. I was devastated, but seeing her made me angry. I realized she was lying to me this entire time. About a month later, a friend of hers calls me up, asked if she could come over to talk. I asked why. She said my ex off and she wanted to tell me some things. My mind goes to horrifying things like she needs to warn me, see a doctor, things like that. Well, when her friend came over and we chatted for a while, her friend was beyond off, talking about how ending the relationship her off. So her way to get back at her friend was to sleep with her ex-boyfriend. Me being in my mental state, I said yes? <laughs> Wait. Oh, okay. Uh, sure. More like I said, uh, yeah, sure, we can do that if you really want to. I mean, like, I'm not, like, opposed to it or anything, but, uh, like, only if you want to. <laughs> So she ends up staying over for a few days as we get to talking about my ex. I tell her about the ring and she had the best idea to get back at my ex. Let's lay down in bed and post a pic of ourselves with the ring between us. Yeah, I thought it was a terrible idea, but I wanted my ex to feel like cr So there you go. <laughs> Not even two hours later, my ex was at the door. We posted the picture at like 11 a.m. and she was at my place at 1240 or something. Right off the bat, she tried to act like breaking up with me was a mistake. She said that I was the best boyfriend she ever had. She was getting scared with how serious things were getting. She said she made a terrible mistake in breaking up with me. Well, her friend immediately goes into a rant about my ex, saying she was manipulative and that neither of us would believe this sob story she was giving. Gotta say, I'm very glad her friend was there because my stupid was believing my ex. I reminded her of how she treated me when she broke up and that she should go home. She was wasting her time. Well, now she brought up the ring. She said she was owed it under the law and that rings are gifts and that I cannot take it back. But you didn't give it to her. You didn't give it to her. In unison, me and her friend said I never gave it to her. We both looked at each other and laughed <laughs> as the absurdity of the situation was getting outrageous. She said she was owed that ring and she was not leaving without it. At about this time, a police officer came up the stairs wanting to know what the trouble was. I guess we made enough noise that the neighbors called the police. The female officer asked what the situation was. Everyone was trying to talk at once. The officer shut us down, pointed to my ex and asked her what the problem was. She said she was trying to pick up her stuff after we broke up. She asked me if that were true. I explained the situation of how my ex broke up with me before I had the chance to propose and she was never given the ring. Throughout the conversation, two more officers showed up want a supervisor. The whole story was explained like four times. It's a good thing that her friend was there too because like it's her word against yours but because you have a witness, you know? At one point my ex said the money from the ring would let her pay off her car. Ever see a moment where someone says something so outrageous that everyone looks at them in utter disgust? I responded with the ring isn't expensive. I bought it used off a website and I reminded her I'm in IT tech. So this wasn't a ring that was 10 to 12k, more like 1 to 1.5k. Oh yeah, did that change her opinion? Suddenly she doesn't want it? The anger and rage that came over her face was immediately apparent to everyone. She stepped forward and punched me in the chest in front of the police? Kicked me before being tackled to the ground by the female officer. The supervisor on scene told us to go inside while they get her under control. We did. About 10 minutes later, they came back. They wanted my statement. I told them I didn't want to press charges against her, but they said, yeah, it doesn't work like that. We saw it, so it's being processed. She ended up getting a misdemeanor offense for it. Bro, that is nuts. Just for the record, in case anybody's confused. Engagement rings are the legal exception to the gift rule. In most places, it's a gift in contemplation of marriage. She would have to give it back anyways. Learn that from Judge Judy. The Supreme Court made a final ruling. The ring has to go back to the buyer or original owner if the engagement was broken. But if the wedding happened, even if it was a family heirloom, it stays with the person who wears the ring. Right. That's fair, except there was no wedding. There wasn't even an engagement. My entitled ex is... Yo. <laughs> uh, that dude is a lot nicer than I am, because <laughs> if you dump me right before I'm... If you dump me right before I'm about to propose to you, and then come over trying to get the wedding ring once you find trying to get the engagement ring <clears throat> after you, after you find out that I was going to propose to you and then you ins you assault me 
in front of the police. I'm letting them take you to jail. <laughs> Especially like in that moment, like demanding that I pay child support. In that moment, I'm so heartbroken, right? Like I'm going to my full petty mind is on. And I'm not thinking about your well being in this moment. If you would have tried this like if you would have tried this four to five months after the breakup, you might have you, you might have got me in, in the soft moment. I probably would have been like, Don't press charges too. But not 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 a couple days after it. Not a couple days after the breakup. Bitch, you going to jail. Okay. <laughs> I want you to throw every book at this bitch. And several books that don't even involve what the fuck just happened here. I want you to th throw a rape book at her. Fuck it. <laughs> she touched my chest without my permission. I, I feel molested. Get this bitch off the street. She is a danger to society. Not only is she trying to steal from me, but she touched me unwantedly. I am... I am pressing every charge known to man. And I have witnesses here and most of my police officers. You're going down. Okay. <laughs> and uh, this is bitch is evil. Like what the fuck? Like you broke you broke up with me, then had the audacity to come over and ask for the ring. First of all, I didn't even give you this ring. You left before I was thinking about proposing to you. You left me before I could get that off. You found out I was going to propose to you and then came over and tried to ask me for the ring. Who the fuck do you think you are, man? <laughs> the fuck? Was I just supposed to hand this over just because I was thinking about giving it to you? What if I wanted to save this for the next bitch who actually deserved it? Like, who the f like, man? <sighs> you know what? This dude, he a good one because, for one, he actually opened the door. What am I reading right now? <laughs> Hi, Daddy. Okay. <laughs> What's up, Athena? How you doing? Athena Smith. And I am very confused because I am seeing your profile picture through this little bubble and I am afraid. What am I what am I looking at here? I don't even want to know. What's up, Athena? How you doing? <laughs> uh wild wild behavior uh females do better how about that do do so much better you could you could be better you could be better in life or or you cannot and uh or you cannot and you can like go to jail and i'd be totally happy with that however you want this shit show to go down all right <laughs> That's pretty much the thoughts I had in my head when I when I heard that story. I'm like, that's that's wild behavior. Like you you can't leave somebody and then come back for the engagement ring that you didn't even know existed until I put it out on the internet. Also, this story proves that uh there is somebody and there's always somebody in the female's friend group who is trying to fuck their man. <laughs> Cause as as soon as soon as she, as soon as shit went bad, or as soon as soon as she pissed off her so called best friend, she ran straight to the ex and and told it all and fucked him. And I feel like that's pretty much every friend group. All right. <laughs> no, you you got there. You got there too late, Betty. Uh, he never, he never proposed to her. He never officially proposed to her. What happened was, um, they broke up. He was think he was thinking about proposing to her. They broke up. He went out and bought the ring and shit. She broke up with him, and uh, then uh, her best her best friend they got into, her and her best friend got into uh. uh, uh got into an argument or they ended up not liking each other the best friend came over to the ex's house fucked him told her some bullshit about the ex and they had this idea uh 
uh, posting a picture of them in the bed together with the engagement ring, saying basically like, "Bitch, this this could have been yours, but you broke up with me." And two hours later, she showed up at the door. Like, at first she was pretending like the the whole breakup was like a huge mistake, and she wanted them back. Then she just dropped that facade and was like, "I just want the ring," even though. I never presented you with this ring. <laughs> I never even offered it to you. There was never there was never an engagement. This ring doesn't belong to you. It was supposed to be for you, but I never offered it to you because you left because you wasn't happy here. Remember, feel free to fuck off now. I just fucked your best friend and that coochie was kind of good. So I'm thinking about giving it to her. <laughs> you feel me? <laughs> Oh, shit. But, uh... <laughs> yeah, no. No. Don't... Don't come... Don't... No. And I'm... You know what? The dude in the story is a simp. Because he, he was falling... For, he even said... He even said it simp. He was falling for the lies. He was falling for the lies. Until, like, the girl's ex-best friend was like, we, we not here for the fuck shit. And then he was like, oh, maybe... He 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 had like simp behavior, but you know, uh, I'm glad he came out of that unscathed and away from that crazy bit. <clears throat> why po <laughs> why post about it? Damn stupid crap. You know, you know when people break up, they do dumb shit. What did you, Betty? Stop acting like you ain't never did. Well, no, I'm, I can say that. Betty, stop acting like you ain't never did no dumb shit. <laughs> you probably ain't never, like, did it on the internet, but stop acting like you ain't never, like, uh, slash no dude tires or put sugar in his gas tank or uh, uh, broke his windshield. You know, I'm just going through the generic shit that dumb women do when they upset after being, like, cheated on or dumped or some shit. not cool socially and you're right it's not cool socially it's it's uh <laughs> actually what what he did was what he did was uh it wasn't dumb it was petty because what he what he did it wasn't like uh it wasn't like uh it wasn't like evidence to be used in the trial later he was just showing like like, look, I fucked, I fucked your best friend, and I got the, enga and she wearing the engagement ring that I had for you, dumb bitch. But now, <laughs> but she, she doing dumb shit in front of the police. So if anything, she's stupid, not him. First of all, uh, Betty. Betty says she 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 didn't leave one tire safe. She cut all four tires. Do you know how? Listen, <laughs> I'm mad. I I instantly like caught an attitude. Just just thinking about like all four tires. Do you, I don't think females understand like how inconvenient that is. Okay. Do you know how hard it is to change one tire? Of course you don't, because your man changes your tire for you. Let me tell you, it's very fucking inconvenient, and it's and it's and it's it's fucking tiring, and it's worrisome. Okay. Now imagine having to change four tires, all because some evil chick, <laughs> some evil chick, just just to slide, just decided that she didn't want you to move nowhere. Like it. it it make you like, and and men, we we just it make you almost like, it make you almost not want to move your car. Like <laughs> you be so pissed, and you be like, and you be like, and men be like, men be so pissed, and don't want the woman to win at all. So we was we almost, and and then common sense kick in, and we realize that we got to go to work in places like this. But we we almost. We almost just be like, you know what? Fuck it. Fuck fuck them tires. Fuck that whole car. That whole car is dead to me now. That's what we want to say. Like, just just fuck it. Just <laughs> you just you never you never be so like you just be done with a car. 
so fucking fast. All right. <laughs> They need a garage. <laughs> I'll still find the car. Listen, listen. If you break into if you break into my garage, that's your ass. That's that's still that's still breaking and entering, and I have the right to shoot you. So, at your own risk. <laughs> Look at Betty put a potato put a potato in a tailpipe and ran a key along the side. Look, I that whole that whole scratching up somebody's car that never fazed me because my cars ain't never really been pretty enough to like. Okay, it scratched and <laughs> so I take I take the bullets out your gun right there and shit. Go scratch it up. It's just gonna match the other scratches that's on the car. Like, I don't fucking care about the paint job of this fucking car, like. <laughs> <laughs> but putting putting a potato in the tailpipe, that's just you people should be ashamed of yourself. How about that? Stalk them. I you you jump straight to the you jump straight to the to the extreme there, Athena. Okay. You jump straight. You ju- you jump straight to stalking. You, you didn't pass. You didn't pass go. You didn't collect two hundred dollars. Like you just went straight to stalking. Like that's what we doing. All right. <laughs> All right. I got a couple more minutes left. Let me see if Taking I can. Uh, responsibility of her chuck except me. except for my ex. She acted offended and demanded. Hold on. A couple months after get. Except there was no wedding. There wasn't even an engagement. My entitled ex is demanding that I pay child support for a kid that isn't mine. Some years ago, I dated a girl. The relationship was bad. She was very controlling and abusive. It ended up really bad and we broke up. I kept going on with my life and after some years, I got a decent job, enough to solve all my needs. I have a comfortable life and I have some savings. The thing is... A couple months after getting my job, my ex contacted me. She first asked me to talk. I believe she may have wanted to reconnect or something. But she showed up with a five-year-old child claiming he was my son and demanding child support. I didn't believe her, but the child's age matched the time since we cut contact. I got advice from a lawyer, a friend of mine, to try and solve this out of the court. I offered to take responsibility, pay all the... My name is Billy Take it. Sorry about that, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Facebook commercials just ruin everything. Nobody care about no damn Willy Wonka chocolate factory. Fucking, ugh. My bad, y'all. Here we go. And be an active part of the kid's life. Only after a DNA test. Everyone was okay with this, except for my ex. She acted offended and demanded to just give her the money she deserved. She used all the excuses she could, even contacted my family and told them I was trying to avoid taking responsibility of her child. When she ran out of excuses and the DNA test was finally made, surprise, I'm not the father. She was so mad with the result and cried about the money, saying it was unfair and she deserved it. But she didn't accomplish anything. Like, just go to the real daddy. Like, like, why don't you just go to the real dad? Moving on to last week, there was a little party at my parents' house. My brother, a friend, and I were talking, and my brother started to joke about the situation with my ex. My friend and I are starting to joke about it, too. Some of our comments were a little dark and bad, but we were far away from the rest of the people. Literally, we were on the opposite side of the house, and nobody else could hear us. At least... That's what we thought. We were laughing like crazies when my sister appeared very angry and pushed me against the wall. She spied us and heard our conversation and she was very mad. She started to yell at us about how horrible people we were for mocking a poor woman. I mean, you can sympathize with her situation, but not with the fact that she's trying to get money out of you. A few hours later, when the party ended, she asked me to go to the kitchen with our parents and she said how awful I was for the previous situation. Apparently, my ex had been in contact with her and she believed her version. And that was her way to have an intervention. So, I'm sorry, she be- your Wait, your sister believed your ex despite there is a DNA test and factual proof proving that you are not the father. My brother and I were like... 
Are you serious? When she started to say how I forced my ex to be a single mother, I have the moral obligation to help her. My dad only said that we maybe were being too cruel, making jokes about her, but that I wasn't responsible for that kid, period. My mom then surprised all of us when she said, even if the kid is not yours, you're making more than enough money to support that child. You should have helped her. My mom said, it's your decision and I respect it. I'm disappointed you ended up being so selfish. I'm sorry, did your ex like go to like the women in your family with like some sob story and like crying and stuff to like get them to sympathize with her or something? I fail to understand like, d does your family not know how horrible she was to you? I'm aware she doesn't deserve my money and I'm not planning to give her any, but the constant harassment of my sister trying to guilt me is just exhausting. <laughs> why is your sister so involved in this decision? I, I don't see why she feels so strongly about this. Just because you have money does not make people entitled to your money. We have an update. It's been a while. After my last post, I read all the comments and decided to show them to my mother. We had to talk about the situation. Again, she started on my ex's side, but after reading the post and all the comments and opinions, she realized she was wrong. After that, she apologized to me. We are good now. On the other side, my sister, at first she decided she wouldn't talk to me until I take responsibility, but after some days, I talked with her. She's totally on her side, even after showing everything. She said that none of that matters because a woman woman's word goes first and that's all the proof anyone could need. I'm sorry. <laughs> Being a liar is not gender specific. Also, she said, even if you're not the biological father, you have an effective responsibility with her. No, you don't. So you must be man enough to take charge of them and start acting like a real man. She was a lost cause. No. About my ex, I did some research and found out that shortly after we broke up, she started dating another guy. Or maybe she was cheating on me before. I'm not sure. They broke up some weeks later and she had multiple dates until she found out she was pregnant. I also found out that she had been trying to find a father for her kid for the last two years years, I was next on the list. But it looks like she's desperate now because she was never that aggressive with anyone before. Now the reason for this post. Some days ago my ex and my sister came to my workplace. Hell no! Throw the whole sister away! They made a big sign with my face that says he abandoned his child an irresponsible father. You are not the father! They started a bunch of drama, saying all their BS. Their intention was to shame me and use the social pressure to force me to take charge. They literally said it. To not make the story too long, they were taken out of the place. I got problems for the scandal, even after showing all the proof and legal documents that showed they were lying. I was told that this better never happen again or I will be fired. After I contacted my friend, the lawyer, and we are now redacting a very long detailed paper against them, my ex and my sister too, they went too far, and now I'm going against them with everything. Maybe that will scare them enough to leave me alone. Like, I just, I fail to understand why your sister is on this woman's side. We have one final update. First of all, I'm not allowed to talk about the lawsuit. The most I can share to you is that my ex was extremely freaked out when she knew about it. She's now begging to drop it. She offered to take back everything she said to never bother or contact me again. She tried to guilt me into saying that I would be ruining her and her son's life, but honestly, I don't care. I got tired of being the good guy a long time ago. She messed with me, now I'm fighting back. And for my sister, the lawsuit at first only made her worse. As her attempt to shame me and my job didn't work as well as she wanted, she moved it to social media, spreading her BS about me abandoning my child or not taking responsibility and exposing my legal actions like acts of censorship and misogyny. At the end, that will be the worst for her, not only because I can dismiss her defamation easily, but also there's more evidence to our favor. He is defaming me! While also defaming you? <laughs> This is dumb as hell. What a spectacle. Recently, we had a posada at my parents' home. Every year, we use this excuse to make a big family party before Christmas. I had my doubts because I didn't want to be near my sister, but after some relatives assured me that she wouldn't be there, I decided to go. Big mistake. She was there. Mom decided that despite everything that happened, I was taking all of this too far. So she wanted us to meet to solve this problem as a family. Fuck it. Damn it with this fucking commercial. Promise next time that we'll choose a site with no commercials. Or just download it. One of the two. Like, God damn it, Verizon. Shut up. I tried to 
get out of there the moment I realized what was intended. But some relatives tried to stop me while my mom cried that I needed to stop. That I was tearing apart the family and needed to learn to forgive and let go. I just find it so funny that like whenever there's like a family altercation that's not your fault, you are the one that's being told that you're in the wrong. When none of this would have even existed if she and your sister didn't try and force you to provide for a child that's not your own. I realized that despite everything, even knowing I was telling the truth, she was still on my sister's side. I got out of there saying that I'm not attending any family event ever again if she's there, and don't ever think of trying this BS again. At this point, almost all my family knows what she did. Some of them think my sister is crazy. Some think she is crazy, but I'm taking it too far. A couple days ago, my mom invited me to spend Christmas with them. I didn't want to go after what she did, but I decided to give her a chance after she swore that it wouldn't happen again. But not only did she plan to do it again, my brother warned me that this time she intended to lock me in until I forgave my sister and stopped the nonsense. I called my mom and told her that I was done with her and my sister. Don't talk to me until she realized she supported the wrong person and to apologize. I don't need to say how many times she tried to call me in the following hours and all the drama she made when I didn't show up. But again, I'm tired of being the good guy. As a 59-year-old woman, mom, and grandmother, it is always astonished. Boom. Boom. Give me some gunshots. <laughs> That's so lame. <laughs> this ain't bitching by the bar. I ain't got to say we love women on this podcast. Women are crazy. Y'all so fucking crazy. I don't No No I see why I see why people like Move to new towns And like Say they're an orphan (laughs) I get it I didn't like Well I get it Cause this is some bullshit Like well, I wouldn't cut off the whole family because the men and the, the men and of this down sexist, but of course the men know common sense. Like the men are on, like they on my side, but the women, like what the fuck is y'all over emotional problems? <laughs> the baby, not mine, but because I make enough money to take care of a baby, y'all want me to take care of this baby that is not mine. We not even in a relationship. So because she just dropped some random child off at my doorstep, I'm supposed to take care of it just because I fucked you once or twice? Be gone, madam. Be gone, you, this bastard child. All this shit. (laughs) Oh, man. Yeah, she went too far. Uh... First of all, worst sister ever. How about that? You are the worst sister ever in life, and I hope you never get another brother or call anybody else brother ever again. You are terrible. Uh, <laughs> fucking, yeah, they went too far. Don't don't come up to my job with, with dumb shit. Like, listen, keep... <sighs> Keep all your dumb shit away from how I make money and how I get to how I make my money. All you crazy motherfuckers who try to fuck with somebody's job or their way to get to their job, like, dude. I'm not going to say, like, I understand why people get shot in their sleep, okay? Because we, I don't agree with violence on this. Well... (laughs) <laughs> I don't agree with um. I don't agree with unjust violence on this show yeah I can get that one off I don't agree with unjust violence with that being said though uh, I do agree with uh uh I won't say, I won't say like stabbing, maybe like, uh, uh, maybe like, uh, uh, I won't say like a stabbing. I will say like maybe, uh, um, a, a slight, a, a light, 
you know, just a quick shoe, shoe across the face. Just mm, mm. not enough to like injure, but like just to reboot the system. Just <laughs> we just we just want to tap the modem a few times. Just mm, just act right. Act right. <laughs> Fucking, ugh, that shit is crazy. That's nuts. Try to your own sister try to force a baby on you that she know is not biologically yours, and then say because she's a woman you should just do it. What the fuck are you saying, lady? How far does that thinking go? Okay, listen, d- she's a woman, so. In order to take care of this baby, you should you should just rob this liquor store because this did they, they need you or whatever to like what what what's happening here? What, what how how far does this logic go? <laughs> it's so fucking stupid. Uh, I hate it here. But this has been another fun episode. Of the fast break off podcast, it went by quick. I was supposed to have been done, but uh, that story went a little longer than I thought it would, and here we are. But uh, I got an episode me that any woman, hush woman, I got an episode, got some content, like I said, I would. Um, I'm going to try anytime I'm not doing like bitching by the bar. <clears throat> I will try to bring y'all a quick solo episode of the Fast Franco podcast. Um, don't know. Hopefully, either either, well, next Friday, either bitching by the bar or another episode of the Fast Franco podcast will be back. But until then, I am Franco the Pen. I want to thank all of y'all for watching this live. This live podcast, and um, let me see what I could outro this with. Let me get some, um, uh, and I'll be, I'll be, uh, I'll be more prepared in future episodes. All right, let's end with this. It's, it's almost Christmas time. Listen, I'll tell you right now, Christmas, Christmas need to slow down. I only got eight dollars. Okay. <laughs> and with that, I'm out. Peace. See you guys next Friday. I'm up out of here.